so folks good morning or good afternoon wherever you are so one of the main question that's been asked with celestron rasa is like how do you take flats or darks or bias frames the second primary question that's been always asked was how do you use this camera for monochrome like not just the one shot color some people though ask another important question like how do you stop the diffraction spikes like you know there is a front obstruction camera in the front so if the cables are coming out uh, if the cables are coming like this way like a dobsonian uh, are the diffraction spikes are going to come this way can you stop them can you bend the light uh, can you actually get away with the diffraction spikes so i wanted to show you how this is going to work uh, as far as the monochrome you have to get a filter slider which is like a manual filter slider and you place the filter slider manually whenever you are done uh, you can buy the filter slider and the adapter from starizona if you want i think there is barter also sells the filter slider but i preferred starizona because they gives they give me that uh, custom adapter that you need for your camera setup as well as your uh, telescope uh, as far as uh, the light bending is concerned i made a custom kind of a uh, light bending thing it works i'm still working on it uh, it's not completely done yet so i'll show you how that works as well regarding the flats you have two choices like basically choice number 1 would be uh, you can put like a t-shirt uh, cut a hole in the middle put it in front of your telescope it works uh, that i have that one too the second one i have is i put a dew shield in front of my telescope and i put a t-shirt in front of the dew shield uh, so i'll show you these methods and i hope it will help you uh, whenever you are trying to image with this rasa or hyperstar so i put these uh, filters into a filter drawer so let me show you how that is going to work so so i have that cable management going to stop the protrusions they are not called diffraction spikes diffraction spikes are when they are evenly done because of all this odd shape uh you will get some spikes so i'm still working on the exact shape i think it should be like a semi circle uh right now my semi circle is little bit bigger so i'm trying to see if i could make the circle you know you see those half circle kind of a cable i need to make them a little smaller so here is how i take my flats let me see if i can switch my phone to the other hand and i hope you can see it so somewhere here so that's how it, the, it it's a magnetic drawer uh, since i keep taking them and putting them i can feel with my hands like where it is be careful you don't want to drop it on the on the glass there so it's pretty dangerous so anyway so that takes care of uh, that business and you can see inside those cables are kind of uh, having uh, like some kind of a tape on them so that they don't like you know come out and once this is done let me show you how the flats are going to work so as you can see i put like a dew shield in front of it and in front of the dew shield i put this little t-shirt kind of a thing i used dew shield mainly to give myself some room to make sure that i can put the uh, you know the t-shirt flat really speaking otherwise i have to cut the t-shirt like a hole for the camera to come out i have another version of the same where the t-shirt is coming out but i would prefer this one uh, better now uh, the only thing was uh, when you are imaging make sure you need to put the dew shield the same way uh, so typically you need to take these flats anyway uh, before your session or after your session that 
So whenever you are taking flats, you need to create like a new sequence with a profile. The sequence in this particular case would be like my camera name and the telescope name and wherever you want to put your flats, like you need to specify like a directory. So right now I am going to save these on my desktop. So I'll create a new folder with a date. So let me do that right now. And you have these extensions here. So they will put the file names and all. They come by default. So change this to flat. Another thing that you got to do is make sure in the camera you are going to select HDR, not manual, but highest dynamic range. So most of the pictures that I'm taking are always highest dynamic range for either Hyperstar or Rasa, whichever ones that you use. Um, usually unity gain will be like way too much gain that it creates and your image is going to have trouble. So leave it as highest dynamic range when you are taking pictures. Image type is RAW 16. Pattern is RGGB. These are all defaults. So click OK and then connect to your uh, camera. Right now you are not connecting your telescope. You are, all you are doing is taking flats. So obviously your the way you do is you need to look at I'm putting like 0 0.001 second. What I'm trying to look for is something below 1000. You see that 606. So that's the typical, uh, you can hear the geese behind. Okay, so uh, typically that's the range I would normally take at 0 0.001. Like I can't go, usually lower, I don't want to go lower than that. But that's the number that I, I'm looking for, not like half the time of uh, your uh, maximum camera depth. You don't want to do that when you're doing Hyperstar or Ross, it doesn't matter. So anyway, so I wanted to call this um, 600K, right? 600 uh, thing, right? Whatever. K is 600. And I wanted to take 50 of them. And I wanted to take... Uh, 0 0.001 exposure and I will continue. You don't need to worry about the cooling part on this one because for flats the cooling doesn't matter but when you are taking darks you need to make sure you match your cooling and also you match your exposure time. You need to make sure you make sure they are correct on both sides. Uh, darks you do the similar uh, thing like all you will do is you check this box here you select dark right let's say if you are taking dark and uh, you wanted to uh, expose your image whatever is the uh, picture that you are taking like you know five seconds or you know two minutes like you know 120 seconds or three minutes like 180 seconds that's the exposure time that you are going to say for the dark and then, of course, you repeat that for like 50 times. But keep in mind, when you are taking darks, you are not taking darks when the camera is on the telescope. Because with Rasa, there is no way to hide the light. Uh, I mean, you can try that. I did try a couple of times. But I found it's easier to take the camera off from the telescope and then just plug it in, plug in the, the, the cooler to that one and uh, just start you know make make sure the cooler is going all the way down to whatever minus 20 or minus 10 or whatever that you wanted to take and then when the camera is ready uh, with whatever is the cooling temperature it is then start taking the exposures here saying that exposure equal to 120 seconds if that's what the picture is and then you repeat that like 50 times when it comes to bias frames the way you would do is whenever you do bias you don't put any exposure at all. You just leave it as zero and you take 50. The idea behind the bias frames is like how much ever the camera can move faster, that's the one that we need. 
So that's pretty good enough. I mean, you, you can take. I hope this video helps when you are using Celestron, Brasa or Hyperstar. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please share your comments. And if you have any questions, I don't mind responding uh, with whatever that I know. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notifications button. Thank you.